A measurement instrument should be valid, but also reliable. Measurement reliability refers to the instrument's consistency, or stability, or precision. A reliable instrument will result in highly similar scores if we repeatedly measure a stable property in the same person. My bathroom skill, for example, isn't perfectly reliable. If I step on it three times in a row, it will usually show two or three different readings. But as long as the readings differ by one or two hundred grams, the skill's reliability is good enough for me. So how do we determine the reliability of instruments that measure social and psychological constructs? Well, in some cases, it's as easy as administering the instrument twice to a group of participants and determining how strongly the results from the first and second measurement agree. This is called test-retest reliability. We can use this method if we're measuring things like weight or reaction times. But as soon as a person's memory of their answer is involved, things become more complicated. Suppose I have a questionnaire measuring fondness of cats. It consists of five questions. If I ask a group of my friends to fill out this questionnaire once, and then again 15 minutes later, they'll probably still remember the answers they gave the first time. Now, if I find a high consistency in the scores on the first and second measurement, is this because the instrument is reliable, or because my friends have pretty good memories and would like to seem consistent in their attitudes? One way to solve this problem is to look at the consistency not between different times, but between different parts of the instrument at one time. This is referred to as internal consistency. We compare responses on the first three and last two questions. Of course, you can only do this if the instrument consists of several questions that are supposed to be comparable and measure the same construct. If this is the case, then you can determine the split halves reliability by randomly splitting the test in half and assessing the association between the first and second half. There are also statistics that are equivalent to the average of all possible ways to split the test. If measurement consists of observation instead of self-report, you can have the observer rate the same behavior twice and assess the association between the two moments. This is referred to as intra-observer consistency or reliability. Of course, the memory of the observer can inflate the association. Since it shouldn't matter who makes the observations, you could also assess the reliability of observation by having two different people observe and rate the behavior, and look at the association between the two rater scores. We call this inter-observer consistency, or inter-rater reliability. Okay, so we've seen different ways to establish how reliable or precise an instrument is. But what is it that makes an instrument less reliable? If the instrument perfectly reflects someone's true score or true value on the property of interest, then the measurement result, or observed score, should be the same every time. But what if we systematically measure an additional construct? Take my cat fondness scale. What if these questions also tap into the construct general positive attitude? This could result in a systematically higher score for people with a positive attitude. We call this systematic error. This means our instrument is less valid, but not less reliable. As long as the observed score is determined only by the true score on cat fondness and the systematic error caused by the second construct, positive attitude, then we would still get the same observed score every time we measured the same person. Reliability is influenced by random error, error that's entirely due to chance. If the observed score is in part determined by random fluctuations, then we get different values each time we measured the same person. If a scale is entirely unreliable, if there's no association between observed scores at different measurement moments, then we're basically measuring random error or noise. Put another way, this means that at least some reliability is required before an instrument can be valid. The reverse does not hold. A perfectly reliable instrument can be entirely invalid. This happens when it perfectly measures a different construct than it was supposed to measure. Let's consider the possibilities in more detail. Of course, the worst case scenario is when an instrument has low reliability and low validity, a lot of random and a systematic error. Even if the true score contributes a little to the observed score, it will be almost impossible to distinguish this contribution. An instrument can also have low reliability and high validity, a lot of random error but very little systematic error. We're measuring the right property, just very imprecisely. An instrument can also have high reliability and low validity, a small amount of random error, but a lot of systematic error, 
we're measuring the wrong property very precisely. Best case scenario is high reliability and, of course, high validity. A small amount of random error and systematic error. The observed score is mainly determined by the true score. We're measuring the right construct with great precision. Of course, the trick is to separate all these error components from the true score, even if there is a fair amount of systematic and random error. Psychometricians and sociometricians aim to do this by using statistical modeling to partial out the random and systematic error.